malleus head clipping and malleus removal this is again a left cadaver temporal bone you can see the uh, complete malleus i am using a malleus head clipper to clip the head of the malleus the neck of the malleus is the narrowest part and the side to be clipped be careful not to injure the underlying cauda tympani while clipping the head of the malleus see the excellent beautiful mucosal attachment the mucosal folds around the head of the malleus the suspensive ligament of the malleus from the tegment tympani it's lovely to study all the mucosal folds still the uh, scutum in the anterior part is intact the prosac space has now been opened and once you remove the head of the malleus you have the complete access towards the anterior epitympanic space so we have relations inferiorly have got the horizontal portion of the facial nerve and the processus cochlearyformis and superiorly the boundary of the attic is the tegment tympani medially you have got the uh, medially posteriorly you have got the ampullary portion of the lateral semicircular canal and the superior semicircular canal this is a beautiful endoscopic view of the anterior epitympanic space you are seeing the epitympanic diaphragm which separates the anterior mesotympanum from the attic These are the mucosal folds which are present, which are destroyed since it's a cadaver. That is a tensor tympanic tendon. You can see the anterior canal wall is broken. The station tube is very clear. The tensor tympanic canal with its muscle. You can see the tensor fold, and that is the supratubal recess. just above the tensor tympani muscle you see the supratubal recess this is again a microscopic view and now this is step to show the cutting of the tensor tympani tendon the malleus is firmly attached by the tensor tympani tendon the anterior ligament of the malleus and the enclosed epidural joint you can see the entry point of the cauda tympani anterior got three openings one for the cauda tympani one for the uh, anterior tympanic artery and the attachment of the anterior ligament of the malleus the cauda tympani enters the canal of hugier still the uh, outer attic wall in the uh, the scutum in the anterior part centering the view of the canal of hugier the anterior ligament of the malleus is now been cut see how firm it is the handle of malleus is now being removed you can see the beautiful appearance of the cauda tympani the uh, anterior outer attic wall the cauda tympani has been removed you are seeing the tensor fold and the supratubal recess that is the common seat of cholesteatoma the 
beautiful view of the process's cochlear reformers the full portion of the horizontal portion of the facial nerve and we can see the uh, uh, small cells in the attic we have got the labyrinth so it could be called as the peri labyrinthine cells Now the small cells in the tegmen tympani and the tegmen antri will be drilled out. So now the anterior uh, uh, outer attic wall of the scutum is being removed. The small cells in the attic is now being cleared to delineate the labyrinth later. So the tegmen antri group of hair cells. This is a highly cellular mastoid. Still part of the anterior buttress is intact. You have to be very careful when you work superiorly because the tegmen antri plate and the tegmen tympani plate may be very thin and it may puncture into the middle cranial fossa. Recognition of that complication is essential. You can see the beautiful dome of the lateral semicircular canal and the facial nerve which lies anterior inferior to it and the uh, stapes which lies again and through inferior to the facial nerve. So the next step will be the preliminary step to drill all the uh, accessible air cells around the labyrinth to delineate and to carve the labyrinth. Those are cells uh, around the uh, posterior semicircular canal. I'm using a small diamond burbit. So all the bone dust should be completely washed away. So we are preparing ourselves for the next step that is to completely delineate the uh, semicircular canals.
Thanks for watching. We will proceed to the next exercise now.